Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hi guys, hope you're all doing okay. I said I'll be back. Um, we've had to go back in the living room. Um, one of my dogs has decided that if I spend too much time upstairs, uh, she does this. Um, it's not so bad because we want to get rid of the sofa when we hopefully move next year um, but yeah it doesn't look great does it so I'm not really trusting them that much at the moment they're currently both out in the conservatory in the garden they're in the doggy equivalent of the naughty step right now but I think I know which one it is because it's true if, if you've seen the YouTube videos where people go did you do this and you see one dog completely fine the other one's like no not me yeah we have that so it's definitely Lucia the newer one so I went to yoga this morning. I wasn't a twisted pretzel today. Today I was doing a tree and a double pigeon. Um, yes, you probably have to look up these moves if you are not a yoga person yourself. Um, it's not too bad because I was sitting on the floor for the double pigeon, uh, but I think I'm gonna be walking funny tomorrow, needless to say. So this video sadly is going to be entirely about Harry and Meghan because there's been two big stories that I wanted to talk about. Firstly, we have the £2.4 million repayment for the renovations done to Frogmore Cottage. Harry has reportedly, it says in the papers, made a contribution, but has paid it off. This is reportedly due to, obviously, the huge Netflix $150 million deal that they made, but I find it a little bit strange. Uh, Netflix, I, as far as I understand, and a few people that are industry insiders have explained that you might get a retainer fee, but they wouldn't receive that money up front. That money is potential earnings depending on what they create and make and considering they don't actually have a production studio yet and it took the Obamas a year before they even produced anything I'd find it odd that Netflix would throw that much money at them. I do not believe that this money came willingly from Harry and Meghan, otherwise they probably would have paid it when they announced the Megxit deal, in my opinion. Um, people have said it's because of obviously the Netflix, there's no way being reported that they're going to earn this substantial sum that they could get away with it. There were a few grumblings in the Houses of Parliament, actually a couple of MPs did mention the fact that it's disgusting that they still owe this amount of money whilst you know buying an £11 million house in LA and all the other things that come with it. Royals should not owe the taxpayers money given that they are multi-millionaires if not billionaires in their own right. I do believe that they were ordered from high above to make the payment. Whether they made it or Charles has made it on their behalf we're never really going to know. Either way yes it's good that the money has been paid back to the taxpayer. I do not think that Harry and Meghan would have willingly handed that money over out of a sense of duty or gratitude. The reason being for this when Megxit was announced they wrangled their way into a really offensive deal if you remember. They were going to pay back Frogmore Cottage over 11 years at £18,000 per month, which uh, they would still be paying rent on the property as well, which I just found absolutely offensive. You know, people talk about how much money Harry and Meghan have independently, and they were going for, what was it, financial freedom or whatever crap that they spouted at the time. So they should have come up with that money to just have a clear slate and go, right, okay, we don't owe the taxpayers money. It is offensive because obviously they had that huge 30 plus million pound wedding um, from the taxpayers. She had that ridiculous uh, wardrobe. Again, obviously this comes out of Charles' money, Duchy of Cornwall, but you know where I'm going with it. Frogmore Cottage, everything that they got, the jet set in, uh, touring Austra Australia and New Zealand, it was all to do with the fact that they had committed their lives to becoming full-time working royals. They had convinced the public and they had convinced the Queen this is what they intended to do. Um, they didn't. They conned the Crown and the UK public and I still just have this gut feeling it was all planned from the very beginning. I personally don't think that uh, taxpayers should pay for royal families' internal um, internal furniture for their properties and their houses. I do believe that with like Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace and stuff, I'm quite happy for taxpayers' money going towards um, maintaining the building because they're very historical. But I do not agree with it being used to furnish um, already rich people's homes. You know, they had floating floors, they had orangeries, they had tennis courts, they had, you know, all these extra stuff put into the house. And I'm sorry if you're so-called millionaires like people keep telling us Meghan was a millionaire in her own right you should be paying for stuff like that no member of the royal family should have their houses furnished by the taxpayers it's also kind of shocking when you think that Meghan was in a, what, a rental in uh, Canada, wasn't she, four years ago? You know, she had, it was a nice house and she kept it well, but it was a rental property. So you think that she would have a bit more of a down-to-earth sort of attitude, but no, she is money hungry now. I know people will say you should be really happy that they paid back the money, but it's not so much, I don't really care about the money. It didn't affect me one way or the other, but what affected me and really upset me and made me really, really angry, my huge bugbear about this, is the reasons why it was done. 
I have to say, despite what some people believe, I don't hate Harry and Meghan. I don't know them to hate them. Um, my channel is about talking with you guys to do with news stories that come up uh, about them and what people say about them. And it's just basically us bouncing stuff back and forth from each other. So we've got over 52,000 subscribers on this channel now, and it's very much your channel as it is mine. So, you know, obviously there's lots of us out there that feel this kind of deep upset towards the, their behavior and the way that they have treated pretty much everyone. Each week none of us can believe that they can sink any lower but last well this week was an absolute that I was in shock and it just really really upset me that they have sunk this low especially Harry. The Invictus Games was set up by um, the royal family's kind of management PR team of Harry's. Um, he needed something when he came out of the military to sink his teeth into. It was something that would be of interest. Harry was very marketable with that whole military background. Lots of people liked him and it worked. He he got into trouble with Las Vegas and all the girls and partying and stuff and then he really got involved with this. Um, I do believe that Harry has always been a bit of a plank but you could tell the way that he was with the athletes, the way he was with the athletes family, he really did care about the Invictus Games. He'd spend full days there um, mucking around, playing with the athletes, just chatting with them, meeting their families. He was, he was definitely really involved and as I said he seemed to really enjoy it. And a lot of people finally thought that Harry had finally found his feet. This was going to be his thing, his baby. And Harry, when he spoke about it, he was always very, very proud of it. Then along came Megan, the destroyer. Dun, dun, dun! The Invictus Games was first used to show the world that they were a serious couple. The papers for weeks did not cover the Invictus, but more about Meghan Markle, which I'm sure that she absolutely loved. The following games, Harry walked around with Meghan, but he, he didn't seem his normal sort of happy self. He seemed a bit despondent. He was just, you know, he wasn't really interacting with people like he had done previously. It was reported by some that he was just turning up to the photo calls, to the handing out the awards bit, and during that time him and Meghan would then disappear. Clearly Meghan was bored. Then when they went to Sydney, it was Meghan giving the speech. I found that really odd, this has always been Harry's baby, but there she was on stage. They were treated to a full five minutes of Meghan Markle talking. She often mentions about shining a light and shining a spotlight, but I really can't help but think Meghan likes that spotlight on her a bit too much. Then at the awards ceremony, we saw her completely wrapped around him. She had her hand over his crotch. Harry was looking a bit uncomfortable, and the only thing I can say, it looks like he's staring off to the land of fairies at that time, and she looks smug as hell. Every event from that point forward, Harry seemed to have changed his distance, his moody. Gone was this ex-soldier kind of camaraderie and everyone's friend at the games to someone that looked grumpy, tired, miserable, unless the camera was on him. A trick he's no doubt learnt from his wife. You can't deny that Harry used to be down to earth with the athletes and with this game. He genuinely used to go there and have a laugh and have a crack. Oh, how he's changed. Sorry, I keep fiddling with my hair. It's really hot in here and um, we've got muggy weather at the moment. So I keep like swishing it about like a L'Oreal advert because I'm worth it. <laughs> but Harry seemed really, really involved in this until Meghan came along. And then it became almost like he had to go to it. There have been several points in Meghan and Harry's relationships where I've said to you guys, even on the videos, that I felt sorry for him. I felt that he was really under narcissistic control. But after this, I just have nothing but contempt for him. I'm disgusted at him. I don't ever want to see him in the UK. I, I don't think I even have any sympathy when he gets spat out because we know it will come. I just think he has let down so many, so many people. When they declared Mexit, it was announced that Harry could not keep hold of his titles while they were having this year break to decide what decision or whatever it is that they were going to do. And rightly so, because how could we have the Captain General of the Royal Marines that was chasing, you know, directors and executives in Hollywood for the next big cash and payday doing public speaking in LA? We all know that Harry didn't take that position seriously enough when he re refused to go to uh, the memorial concert for Marines in Deal in Kent, where I think it was 11 Marines had lost their lives. Harry was um, invited to go to that and he turned it down and now we know why he turned it down so he could go to the Lion King premiere with Meghan and pimp her out for work. 
that has to be the lowest of the low for the military and I couldn't imagine Prince Philip was particularly amused at that. Princess Anne, all of them, they take their military titles very seriously and it was just disgusting. What's more bizarre though, Harry and Meghan didn't stop moaning about it. You know, there were so many articles that came out and things how Harry was really disappointed that his military is taken away from him. There is his extended family. Well, it shouldn't have come as a surprise given how he treated his actual family that he did it in the end. He's, he's Mark all his military family too. On Sunday, just gone the 6th of September, the Sunday Times ran a story explaining to the world that Harry and Meghan have pulled the plug on an Invictus Game charity event that was set to raise millions. Invictus have been really struggling with money and the concert was going to be held, I think it was um, at, the, at the bowl that you guys have in America. And, um, you know, you were going to have people like Beyonce and Ed Sheeran all signing up to it. The Sunday Times said they had spoken to a source at the Invictus charity and what happened was they received a phone call, not from Harry, but from Harry's lawyer. You know, he's really super famous now, citing that they were pulling the plug on the huge concert due to conflicts of plans with another streaming service. Um, this whole concert was to be streamed by Amazon, who is Amazon's biggest rival. Netflix. You don't need a crystal ball to work out what's happened here. In my opinion, I think Harry chose to sell out the Invictus Games to um, for the cash cow that is Netflix. Now, since then, they have actually tried to cover this up. It has been reported that they only cancelled it due to the bug. Perhaps they've got inside information um, and they know that we're all still going to be locked up in June 2021. Um, I hope not, seriously. But it does seem bizarre that they've predicted that the concert couldn't have been held that far ahead. We've obviously since heard from Omid uh, since then, talking about Harry, who can now probably write his own legal letters, he's done that many of them, has now sent a legal letter to uh, the Sunday Times stating that the story is inaccurate and um, it's definitely not true and I guess he's after an apology or a payout. <laughs> Shocking. We've also heard from a representative from Invictus who has uh, come out and openly stated that Harry is still very, very much involved with the Invictus Games. Yeah, sure. Two words for you, damage control. So if they've only canceled it due to the bug potentially being around in June 2021, why not um, postpone it, push it back to a later date? Well, they can't, can they? Because they've signed with Netflix. Why not throw a virtual concert instead? I mean, this is big money now. Lots of people are doing virtual concerts and things to raise money. Any money is still positive money for the Invictus Games, but no, they can't, can they? This is why there's no suggestions of it, because it's streamed through Amazon and they are now signed up to their arch rivals, Netflix. Personally, I'm inclined to believe the original source that spoke to the Sunday Times, who no doubt Harry and Meghan have probably insisted that they lose their job by now. They not only said that the, what the lawyer had told them for the Sussexes about it was a conflict of a streaming service, it's very bad form and everyone is gutted. That to me sounds like a more truthful response. The Sunday Times is not a red top newspaper where they make up lots of gossipy stuff. It's actually quite a serious newspaper, so I'm inclined to believe them that they're not just making this up from a source. It is bad form. It's worse than bad form. It's utterly disgraceful. I cannot honestly truly believe that Harry has done that. I mean, he has changed so, so much, hasn't he, since he's been involved with Meghan. Yes, I do believe that Harry, as I said, has always been a bit of a selfish plank, but he genuinely used to love the Invictus. And I also find it disgusting that he didn't actually ring Invictus himself to speak to them. This is supposedly his baby, but there he is getting his lawyers to ring them. You know, it's a very sort of Meghan sort of tactic, isn't it, where she did that with her agent. We're too famous now to speak to people directly directly go through my legal team. I think he's completely let down Invictus Games, especially when they're struggling. And I don't know, perhaps Invictus Games can actually turn around and say, we'd actually rather have someone else who's a royal patron. Lots of people have recommended Zara and Mike Tyndall. They are two of the most sporty royals. And you know, they're fun, they're bags of laugh. And I think that they would be great with the athletes. I think they'd be great at building up an atmosphere and doing the same what Harry used to do, you know, mixing with the athletes. They're very, very down to earth couple. I just can't see how they can keep Harry on after this, because if he's done this now, what's he gonna do? Just him and Meghan turn up to hand out the awards so they can get their pictures. Or worse, they might now try and poach this idea from Amazon, who I hope sue them, and then and obviously then pass it over to Netflix. But either way, that charity needed the money. It was all set for next year. They said that Harry was completely on board until this Netflix deal went through. Then obviously he's gone, right, I can cut ties with everything now. So you can see why I'm not exactly overjoyed that they paid off 2.4 million pounds debt owed to Frogmore Cottage. They didn't do it for the right reasons and more importantly, they have used the Invictus Games yet again. It was reported Harry was gonna use the Invictus Games to get a visa out in America. 
He's used the chance to play back Frogmore as to soften the blow as to what he's really done to the Invictus games, and I think it's absolutely disgusting. He has let down the military and all of those athletes yet again. Neither of them deserve any titles or positions that were given to them through um, being part of the monarchy. We know Meghan only works 72 days and Harry, keep the Prince title. It doesn't mean diddly squat in America, but I think everything else needs to be stripped of them. They don't deserve it. They do not behave in a way that's honouring charities, military, the Queen, the country, anything. I think and Americans love their military, so I think that they are also going to be equally disgusted at him. So that's my rant over. I'll be back with you guys very soon. So take care. Bye. If you like my video, please remember to like and subscribe. Please angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers for time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.